oh, nightmare scenario, right? These are, uh, for anyone who um, has not seen this kind of specimen before, all of these fragments of skin from a Sunday image old person, because look, the dermis is totally blue because it's completely replaced by solar elastosis. But these are multiple fragments. And the reason it's fragmented like this is this was curetted and removed with a sharp scraping curette. And the, um, the reason probably was that it was assumed to represent um, clinically maybe a seborrheic keratosis, they thought it was, and it was curetted out um, and then submitted for pathology. I'm thankful that it was submitted for pathology, but unfortunate that it was curetted because um, in a case like this, um, this ended up not being a seborrheic keratosis. This was melanoma. This is lentigo malignant melanoma, where you can see confluent growth. This is actually a pretty good example of confluence. Atypical melanocytes replacing the basal layer as single cells, and there are nests in some areas. There's pagetoid spread here. Lentigo malignus sometimes don't have pagetoid spread. Sometimes they have none. Sometimes they have some. It just depends on the case. And then in other areas, you can see nesting. There's nests right here. Obvious atypia here. Uh, if you're just starting out, sometimes it can be hard to tell. Uh, are these melanocytes or keratinocytes? The pale cytoplasm, I think, is really helpful. The pigmented cells here are actually mostly keratinocytes. I've got a video about melanocytes versus keratinocytes that has some tricks. That's a short video. You might find that helpful. Um, you can go check that out on my Kiko Index with the link down below. So this is why I would encourage um, anyone watching this, please don't um, curette pigmented lesions unless you are like 100% certain it's a seborrheic keratosis. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Uh, is there any time where curetting a seb that would you, would you curette a seb? Is that okay if you're sure it's a seb? I think that's a very reasonable approach. And I can understand that some people, because there are some times that you look at a seborrheic keratosis and it's certainly one, but I will tell you that, that um, we all are frail humans that can make mistakes. And I have seen many very, very good skilled dermatologists that really thought something would be a seb or keratosis or lentigo and they biopsied it, appropriately biopsied it, and it ended up being melanoma and they were shocked. And I've also seen times where they thought it would be, you know, a basal or something else and it was a melanoma or they thought it'd be melanoma and it was something different. That's why I still have a job. It's not because those dermatologists aren't good. They were some of the best dermatologists I've worked with. Every dermatologist will have this problem and be tricked. Just like I, there are some specimens that pathologists know, no matter how good I am, I will always be afraid of that entity or that type of specimen because you can always be tricked by it, right? Medicine is hard and, and uh, lesions don't uh, play by the rules sometimes and we know that they can be tricky. So knowing that pigmented lesions can be melanoma and knowing that even very good people, sometimes it's sometimes not possible to tell them apart. I do feel like it's probably safer to biopsy, not curette a pigmented lesion. I like that approach, but I can recognize that there may be other schools of thought on that. Um, but I would not want a pigmented lesion curetted off of me or my family. I'll, I'll say that at least. So take that for what you will. Because the reason that this is a problem for anyone who hasn't put this together, in this case, it looks like most of this lesion is in situ, thankfully. But what if it were invas invasive melanoma? You would then have fragments. And how would we know how deep the invasion goes? Because none of these fragments are oriented in the normal way that we embed tissue so that when we cut it, we can see a, a perpendicular to the epidermis, right? Like a straight down cut through the skin. So we can see epidermis, dermis, subcutis in that order. And we can measure all of our derm path is based on that with the exception maybe of alopecia biopsies. But uh, that's how we measure Breslow thickness. So when you have a really tangential fragmented specimen like this, there's no way to give an accurate Breslow thickness. And Breslow thickness is how we predict the behavior of a melanoma, how we decide whether or not to do a lymph node uh, biopsy or dissection. So this can create a really terrible situation if you curette out uh, an invasive melanoma. And yet, in general, I would say anything, if you're a patient watching this or you're someone who's going to do biopsies, I don't think any tissue should go to the trash with the exception maybe of skin tags that are obvious, obvious, non-pigmented skin tags. And in general, I say like uh, dermatologists, uh, I feel actually uncomfortable with anyone but dermatologists doing that because I have seen other people who have less familiarity with derm that have thought something would be a skin tag that was clearly not a skin tag. 
clinically or microscopically. Again, you can disagree with me if you like. I'm just telling you my opinion based on 11 years of Dermpath path practice and seeing various things that have happened and mistakes that have been made along the way. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I'm just trying to think about patient safety first. So uh, if in doubt, do not throw tissue away. I have seen patients that came in that had a biopsy done. They thought it was something benign and they didn't send it the pathology. They threw it in the trash and the patient came back with metastatic melanoma in their lymph node a year or so later you know so guess what that lesion was probably a melanoma we'll never know for sure will we so um and i'm not saying i i get paid salary i'm not saying this so i get more specimens i don't want more work i got plenty of work guys so there you go so there's our our philosophy patient safety lesson and again i'll probably get roasted in the comments but patients first that's what matters most